Let's try completing Spillway on chimps with just three towers. The Master Bomber, the biggest one, and try and get up to Homeland Defense, but if not, call to arms with our financial situation. You need to eat King Shurikens after round six so that you can actually get through the round. And then after that, Ninja Discipline, and then we'll be placing down our Mortar. Let's place down our mortar and then hopefully we can get bigger blasts as soon as possible. By the way, we're 101 Ninja Monkey. Getting bigger blasts means that hopefully when we can have the Mortar Monkey in this cursor, we can actually have a chance of hitting all the balloons that are in here. And why the biggest one over the other two paths? Well, Pierce. Master Bomb is going to be very good against like Mo class balloons and the the bigger blast is going to be very good against uh, lots of targets. You can tell if this is not a blackwater guide. Delayed our pursuit of bigger blast to get sharp shuriken so we can hit more balloons per shuriken. Balloon buster. Then after that, we're going to get some shell shock. So that hopefully at times, balloons will be stunned within this radius here. Yeah. As I said earlier, definitely not a black border guide. Caltrops is next. After that, Flash Bomb, then Sticky Bomb. Then we're going to think about giving some camera detection for our Mortar Monkey here. Leads won't be a problem, thanks to the Mortar. Flash Bomb time is going to help us out in the, um, well, the next few rounds when it comes to camo balloons, because only the Ninja Monkey at the moment can pop camo balloons. Sticky bomb purchased for on, sorry, on round 38, which means that we are fully prepared for the first Moab and the Moabs beyond as well, as we venture later on into this game of chimps. Round 40, Moab coming up, Moab eliminated. I don't think there is a brilliant spot for the monkey village, so it provides as much regrow, it, well, as much regrow, um, uh, prevention as we can because the majority of the time balloons are going to be in this circle here. Getting the big one next to stun balloons, they were going to get MIB in preparation for round 63 because there's going to be a lot of zebra balloons when we pop ceramics and um, we can't just leave it to the ninja monkey here in order to pop all of the zebras because only the shockwave factor of the big one can pop zebras. And if they're within the center here, then it's only the main damage that can actually um, do anything against them, in which we cannot, because there's no MIB here, and we don't have Striker Jones on the field. Here is MIB, and the sacrifice of all black balloons because of their explosive immunity. Second Moab coming up, and deleted. BFB, let's see how we're going to handle against this behemoth. And we dealt with it. Lovely. Thanks to the MIB, we can do damage against Zebra Balloons. Fortified Moabs, no issue whatsoever. Round 63, high amount of pierce from the big one artillery, no problem there. Although when some people hear that I call it artillery rather than mortar, they can confuse and they're thinking like, no. That's like a, a something for something tower for Mortar family. How dare you say that? Look, when I say artillery, I also mean Mortar, okay? And this round is looking a little bit difficult. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to put you on strong, actually, so that you target the strongest most Moabs. And hopefully the big one can kind of target these weaker Moabs in the center here. And... That is, that sh yeah, that's good actually. So, ideally for round 64, put the Ninja Monkey on strong so that it targets the fortified Moabs before the uh, the normal ones when they enter the circle here. The fortified ones, I mean, when they enter the circle. Take their priority away from the regular Moabs and go to the fortified ones. How are we going to film this round here? We got that round lovely. Oh, uh, this is like another scenario where I need to target the fortified ones and hope that the big one can handle the fortified ceramics. Mostly through the stun feature as well as damage. That's a lot of stunnage. We are 5k away from the biggest one. Despite having the name the biggest one, it doesn't have the biggest explosion in the entire game. That goes to the super mines or the Saar Bomber ability. I honestly think that 
Ninja Kiwi should change it so that it has an explosive radius of the entire map. Just kidding, by the way, but that would be funny and satisfying to behold. Speaking of which, we are going to get it on this round. Overly? Oh, great, you're just teasing me with these now. Can we? Yeah, after this one, we should be able to get it. And there we go. The biggest one is active. Along with that, the potential stun of Mo class balloons. If a pop count just speaks for itself, the Mortar Monkey is definitely surpassing the Ninja Monkey. But we cannot do this without the Ninja Monkey. Like, her Sticky Bomb, I believe it does more damage to Mo class balloons than the biggest one does. But without the biggest one, then it feels like all of the balloons in their masses will just go past the ninja. Also, with all this stun here, it gives the sticky bomb ninja enough time to be able to place down enough bombs for <laughs> the mole class balloons that enter the circle here. And round 76 was a doddle because of a huge pierce of the biggest one here. This means not only very good when it comes to stuns and damage per shell, but also the pierce of it as well. I think it's like the path that has the most amount of pierce when it comes to any mortar, just because it has the biggest of explosions. It'd be weird if it has the bigger, sorry, biggest of explosions, and it only has a pierce count of one. Like that would be terrible. That would be some kind of April Fool's joke, wouldn't it? Uh, please don't do that, Ninja Kiwi. I know what. We're going to increase the damage of this by times a hundred. But we're gonna decrease its pierce by <laughs> we're gonna divide it by 100 usually regrows on round 79 can be an issue but not this time around with this amount of pierce going on right here <laughs> there's nothing to worry about here is the entrance of the zmg into the fray do not worry you're only gonna be the weakest of your kind and yes, I think that's actually going to be the easiest round until round 85 when we have two ZMGs out. Because of just the huge amount of pierce that we have. And the stuns that we can have on all of the ceramics that enters this circle. Let's put you on strong so that you're targeting the fortified BFBs rather than the regular ones. And hopefully enough damage is casted onto them. Please. There we go go that's the round sorted we'll be getting the master bomber soon and combine the far away damage that the master bomber can do to well targets which are not even in the circle and then with the biggest one in tow doing lots of stun and damage and then providing temporary but a huge amount of attack speed boost and ps to both of these towers I think we should be in the clear in order to get this scenario done. We should get the Master Bomber right about now. There we go. And I'm going to take you to Strong because you can deal with the weaklings. <laughs> Sorry, deal with the weaklings. There we go. Stick to that and I'll get the second ZMG. You see how easy this is? This is beautiful. As long as you just <laughs> make sure you did what I didn't do in the previous rounds where I failed, you should be able to get Blackboard on this map with just three towers. Next up, we're going to get Call to Arms, and then hopefully if we have enough money, Homeland Defense. Do we have enough Ducker to get through this round? Of course we have enough Ducker, okay? Who do you think you're talking to here, dear Orc? Okay, round 90. DDT territory, go down, please, thank you. We should be able to get call to arms when we have our next DDT issue going on here. Fortified Moabs, if they can make it far away, sorry, far enough into the circle can cause a huge issue, amount of issue for us, but I think they're getting stunned enough so that they're not a worry. Yeah, come on now. And we have call to arms active. Did I get it up in time? Hopefully I did. Oh god, call to arms, please. <laughs> we can also increase the amount of stunning which happens with call to arms. Let's use it now. Provide as much damage as we can. And our next call to arm usage will be on round 95. And the timing of it is going to be quite critical when it comes to our success in round because of the amount of DDTs that we are facing off. 
about 95. It's going very smoothly at the moment. Okay, so let's slow down just a little bit. Wait for the majority of the DTs to enter the circle here. Hopefully, with enough timing going on here, we should be able to... Okay, let's do it earlier. Let's put you on a uh, camo priority. So that you're always targeting the camos of the round. Come on now. Okay, let's do it now. And we have the round sword. We have this round sorted. Come on, please. Don't let... The same story as last time. Surely we can do it. Okay, well, that's embarrassing. I didn't even see the balloon that escaped there. There we go. I was planning to just use my biggest one's cursor a bit. Well, not cursor ability, but cursor feature to try and change it to if a, um, a ceramic tries to escape there. Do we have enough pierce to get through round 96? This is a good test to see if this combination is good enough for the rest of the run here. Come on, please. I don't think we have the monetary means to get Homeland Defense, to be honest. Okay, of course. Uh, <laughs> actually, let's set you to one of these. And then hopefully be able to stun it enough so that you're about as far back as you can possibly be. Because you're... Okay, you are actually on strong, so that's okay. We need call that to, Sorry, call to arms for round 98. So we're not going to use it on this round. Oh, the RBE per balloon here is very strong. Round 98... Target the ZOMGs. See now. Yeah, the timing of our ability is going to be very crucial here. Uh, let's use it now, actually. But I'm thinking round 99 is also going to be crucial. But we don't have as many DDT to try and counter. That's the thing. Round 98. Oh, we've run out of quarter arms. And they're making their way very far into the map here. Yes. Yeah, okay. We've got a good run going on here. Okay, fortify DDTs. This shouldn't be a big issue, hopefully. Stun them enough. Okay, we don't have enough money for Homeland Defense, which is a shame, really. I really would have liked it, you know. Okay. Bad. Give us your worst. Okay, that's that gone okay so the rest should be a doddle here i just need a few more thousand to get homeland defense that's all but i i swear we can just settle with quarter arms i suspect so that is folks a three tower chimps on an advanced map pretty good even though i've kind of already done this strategy myself with my um initial black border guide for this map where there's a bit more consistency involved because there are more towers uh, for example, there was Striker Jones. We did have a Poppinor on the map. Uh, somebody mentioned that having the um, a Shattering Shells would be more of a utility because of the fact that it can defortify balloons. But I'm thinking, yeah, Poppinor does a lot of damage anyway. So I think we should just good with that. When you don't have enough rate of fire, you have even more <laughs> rate of fire. So this is a good synergy, actually. A good single target damage attacker. And then a good damage, sorry, a good damager towards so many different balloons all at once. This is one of the best towers to use when it comes to lots of ceramics. Obviously, per shell would be better with the bunny stuff, but I'm going with stuns rather than just pure damage. And then tick damage as well. But I swear they've made it so that either cross path with this is very good. Obviously, you could use this cross path here for decamification, but uh, yeah, I just wish I had a three more thousand, for goodness sakes. Oh, well, folks. So the beginning of the video is a bit of a lie because we tried to get home on defense, but we only got quarter arm. So thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Let me know what you thought of us about this video down in the comment sections below. And let me know if there are other three tower chimp combinations that you can think of on a... Um, advanced map or even like a, an expert map i've heard that gerardo in permacharge is possible infernal 
But then again, I hate expert maps in general. People say that these are easy, they're not. I just wish people can actually understand that. These are easy. These are mid. These are kind of hard. And these are hard. You know, they're put in different categories for a reason. Even though Sulfur Screen should be a beginner map. And Polyphemus is cancer. Thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.